We're on the edge of the Periston Estate this afternoon where there's a, a big family event called BioBlitz going on and uh, I'm talking now to uh, Sarah Sawyer, one of the organisers. Um, Sarah, there's, I believe BioBlitz is um, a 24-hour uh, recording of all, all the wildlife and plants etc on the estate, is that Absolutely. correct? Absolutely, yeah we've been really really honoured and privileged actually to get access to this estate um, today. We've actually been here yesterday as well we had over 120 school children here helping with the 24-hour marathon to record as much wildlife as possible. We had um, school children from Ashfield Park and Ross and Wye and from Home Lacey and from Mordeford and we were here all day and then today the um, event has been open to the public. We've also had the um, uh, a range of different countryside organisations here from Herefordshire Nature Trust to the R Herefordshire Records Department, a whole range of different organisations involved in recording as many um, different um, species of wildlife as possible um, over the whole 24 hours plus walks going out so that members of the public can really enjoy um, all that knowledge that the experts have. Well, I'm talking to some visitors now for um, that have uh, come to BioBlitz, and uh, I'm talking talking now to Donna. You've just enjoyed a lovely picnic, and you're looking forward to a walk. I am. We're doing um, a walk on veteran trees with Catherine Owen for the Woodland Trust. Um, so we're going to go round the estate and have a look at some of the veteran trees around the area. It should be interesting. I mean, it's quite rare actually for people to be allowed onto the estate. So it is, and it's very good. And I think the more um, they have events like this and make people aware of our environment and what's happening in our environment, the better it's going to be. Yeah, but that's lovely. I mean, do you actually have an interest in nature? Are you actually involved in any of the groups? I'm not involved in any of the groups. Um, I do support, obviously, my friends who are in the groups and the Woodland Trust, um, National Trusts and Parks and things like that. We do support those um, and I try um, to help them if I can, if I've got any spare time. <laughs> well, that's nice though, because every little bit helps. And uh, I believe does. these, these uh, young ladies are from France? Yeah, they're from Paris. So mm -hmm. they've come to see all the ancient trees today and learn how to measure a tree so they can take it back with them. That's oh, right, yeah, that would be good. Have you enjoyed the picnic so far? Yeah, it's, yeah, very, it's nice. very nice. Yeah. Yeah, very and you're looking forward to your walk? Yes. Yeah? Yes, yeah. Have, yeah. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and thanks very much for talking to us. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> As you're aware, we're at BioBlitz this afternoon and I'm talking to a head gamekeeper of um, the Periston Estate who have very kindly allowed the AON, the Y Valley AONB to conduct this survey. It's very good of you to let them onto the estate. And well, <laughs> we're hoping that people are going to understand a little bit more about Periston. That we're trying to encourage people actually to come into the countryside and look at gamekeeping as well because it's not just about um, shooting animals and killing animals we're all about uh, nature and conservation and actually the areas have got more this area has got more in the way of nature than most places that aren't keeping yeah that's right I mean I mean look at looking at the uh, some of the information you've got here I mean you have to take control of uh, pests like gray squirrels and things like that because they do tremendous damage to the trees we've don't got they? a big problem at the moment we're catching about 400 gray squirrels a year off wow. Harriston um, they're actually killing probably 40% of the oak trees that are planted but they don't kill them until, until they're 10 years old so no. we've lost 10 years of our harvest so 10 years out of a 200 year cycle is quite a lot. Um, we're actually putting 450 acres over to the grey partridges at Wobage Farm and um, we're releasing pairs of, of grey partridges hopefully with broods of partridge chicks, of grey partridge chicks. It's going to be an area just actually set aside, never going to be shot so as we can try and bring the grey partridge back into this part of Herefordshire. Oh brilliant, that's a wonderful piece of con conservation. That's what we're trying to do. So the Governor has put a lot of effort, we put conservation headlands in, we put um, wildlife headlands in, beetle banks in and recently um, we're hoping that it's going to increase the songbird life by yeah. 70%.
Well, BioBlitz is turning out to be a really interesting event for visitors. And I'm here now talking to Dave of the uh, Herefordshire Action for Mammals group because he's got some quite interesting things on his table. So I've just been nosing around. And uh, what, what, what is this uh, skull, please, Dave? It's a badger skull, that one. A badger, badger skull? Yeah. I mean, it actually looks quite small, but so, uh, you know, what, what sort of age do you think? I think it'd be an adult because all the teeth are state of the teeth until it's an adult. Yeah. It'd obviously look bigger if it was all you know, had its fur on that. Yeah, I yeah. suppose. Yeah, a bit like a fluffy cat, they're all fur and when you pick them up there's next to yeah, nothing to yeah. them. Yeah. <laughs> I see. And um, and what have we got in here? It looks like a That's a selection of nuts that have been eaten by various different sort of small mammals, mice and dormice. And you can tell what's eaten them by the way that the the hole is made. The yeah. Teeth marks. So those animals nibble in different ways, do they? Yeah, yeah. A dormouse will make a very circular hole, and it's almost like it's scooped out the middle. Where um, other sort of mice, the teeth marks sort of go the other way. Yeah. And, and squirrels just sort of smash them up. Yeah, of <laughs> yeah. course. They're <laughs> squirrels. <laughs> Um, I'm here now uh, talking to Nigel nice. Hand, who um, has a rather lively grass snake in his hand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nigel Hand with a grass snake in his hand. Yeah, um, it's a young female grass snake uh, we, we've, that we've bought for this uh, show today. Uh, basically to show people the difference between a grass snake and an adder, really. Um, people seem to have a lot of problems and, and uh, identifying snakes. You know, we've only got two snakes in Hereford, two snake species, I should say, the grass snake and the adder. And you can instantly tell this is a grass snake. One, I wouldn't be holding it if it was an adder, obviously, but no. it's obviously, it's got this yellow or, or pale coloured cream coloured uh, collar and black collar behind its head yeah. uh, that instantly tells me that's a grass snake it's a young one uh, they tend to grow up to a metre or a metre and a half wow. uh, the longest grass snake caught in this country was about 1.8 metres so they, it's it's surprising people how big they can get uh, fairly aquatic snake meaning that it spends a lot of time by the water or in water uh, where they hunt frogs toads newts fish uh, and uh, regularly come into garden ponds so if people are surprised by a snake visiting their garden it's it's generally a grass snake right uh, they they also like compost heaps because they're the only snake to lay eggs so, oh, right. and these are actually uh, grass snake eggs that were hatched oh. uh, out of a, a compost heap in Herefordshire uh, you can tell that generally that they've hatched out by the slip mark in the shells yeah uh, so these these are eggs uh, adders don't lay eggs they give birth to live young so do slow worms the legless lizard and common lizards so uh, you can you can actually make your garden snake friendly by building a compost heap uh, for all grass snakes. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's, it's definitely a good idea to do. And slow worms as well, regularly occurring gardens. Uh, there's a little young slow worm look. Uh, yeah. Very bronzy uh, or coppery coloured uh, reptile. A legless lizard, not a, uh, a snake. No. Uh, and it's uh, strange, a slow worm, the name, it's not slow, it's not a worm. No. And, and the old name for uh, in Herefordshire and Worcestershire for slow worm was blind worm. Yeah. And they're not blind and not worms again. So it's... Uh, it's a strange yeah. misconception. I was just going to ask you actually yeah. if he had a little forked tongue, and he oh, does. I just they, saw him poke it out most likely. They, they can blink as well, which a, a snake can't do. This one has unfortunately lost the tip of its tail, oh, right, uh, yeah. which is uh, basically a, 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 well, their, their only way of sort of escaping predators that yeah. they drop their tails, and the tail will carry on wriggling while the animal, like a magpie a or, like a, worm or a crow, yeah. will be attracted to that. Yeah, and and the, the, the slow worm goes on to live another day, basically. Yeah. But uh, if you get them in the garden, they feed on uh, slugs. So they're a great uh, ecological garden sort of asset, really. So oh, right. you don't have to put slug pellets down with these things around. So uh, no. great things to have around. Uh, and, and they're pretty common in Herefordshire. We, we find a lot of sites where they occur. Uh, and they come into gardens regularly. People probably don't even know they've got them. If you no. put some tins down or some felt on a warm bank, uh, there's a good chance you'll find out you've got slow worms. Yeah. And then you can sort of look after them with that, really. Uh, we've got management guidelines there. There. and obviously the group Herefordshire Amphibian and Reptile team are keen to hear from records that people have or sightings or if they want to get in touch with us to tell us about anything we're keen to talk about how they can nurture their uh, habitat for these animals.